So I got an email from somebody earlier today, and they work for a company. I'm not going to say the type of company they're in, just to protect their anonymity. So don't worry if you send me questions, by the way. I don't uh, reveal your name unless you say it's okay. I don't even reveal where you are. Anyhow, so he works for a company, and he was doing some uh, spreadsheet work and so on. And he decided on his own initiative to start learning a little bit of Python on the side, just to see how it is. So he told his boss at one point, said, hey, I'm learning a little bit of Python, you know, just trying it out, what the hell. And his job was not developer. He's kind of an IT guy who did a little bit of coding for spreadsheets and stuff. Fast forward, he gets, uh, I don't know, it was a few weeks or a few months later, his boss says, hey, you still doing that Python? I said, yeah, yeah, I did a bunch of Python stuff, you know, on the side, just learning on my own. So his boss said, okay. So he made him basically the lead of a new team, but they were going to be writing a lot of Python code for data analysis. So a nice upgrade. So he's been working there for a little while now, and I get the impression, I don't know if he ever mentioned in the email, but he's kind of a youngish guy, I'd say in his early, mid-30s, something like that. And he's thinking about wanting to make more money. So what should he do? So there's two options I listed for him. Number one, he could get into uh, side gigs, side jobs on the weekends, etc. Doing web development is the most likely opportunity. Why? Because the web is just so prevalent. The other thing you could do is just get better and better at Python. In this case, he's doing Python work. Just get better at it. Understand the Python ecosystem better. Be better able to do the work, leverage the tools, etc., etc. Be a better leader. That's where interpersonal skills come in handy. And then you could rise up the ranks within that organization. So you have two choices. You have freelance, go into freelance, or you do sideline side freelance gigs, or just concentrate on your core work and rise up that way. The thing with freelance, more work, but more opportunity, and there's no major lag time. Whereas if you're waiting for a raise to happen, working for a company, depending on the dynamics at the business, you might have to wait a year for that to happen. Whereas freelancing, you could probably start getting your first job, first jobs within a few months, if not sooner, depending on your contacts and so forth. Which direction you decide to go, freelance or just try to become a much better at your current job, is really a personality choice thing. Do you like working at large organizations? Do you like working in that environment? Or do you prefer to be more of the renegade, the renegade freelance nerd? Both are fine. Both are fine. A question he put to me was, do people go into freelance simply because they can't get corporate jobs? They don't have the education or something. Short answer is no. There's might be situations where people say, I'm going to go freelance because I can't get a job. Who knows why? Education, maybe age, I don't know. But it, but from my experience, the vast majority of people who go freelance is because they don't want to work at a corporation. They want that freedom that freelancing brings. Both opportunities, whether you go freelance or corporate lifestyle, working for somebody, have their pros and the cons. I would argue, though, with freelancing, slower startup depending on your sales skills and what kind of contacts you have. But in the end, the freelancer, if they know how to manage money well, they're consistent with their sales and marketing practices, they can make a lot more money simply because when you're working for somebody, if they're paying you 100000 a year, which is equivalent to 50 bucks the hour, that means they got to make at least double in terms of the return on your work. So... It's, it's just kind of a very broad way of looking at this, I, I admit, but there's this added value that you provide that the employer you work for is able to extract from your work, which is fair, right? So if you can set up your own work, if you will, via a freelance business or ultimately your own SaaS, you can capitalize on your own time. So instead of making that 50 bucks the hour at 100,000 a year, you can do 200 or more as a freelancer. But there is that lag time as a freelancer, and there is that added responsibility in the freelance lifestyle. Just something to keep in mind. So I started writing code in the 1990s, early 1990s. I wrote my first website for my own business that had nothing to do with technology. 
but I wanted to try to get into other markets in the early web days. So that's how I started writing code. And then when I sold out of that business, I started doing freelance projects for people, eventually building my own SaaS softwares. I have been tempted by the siren song of the job working for a corporation, established corporations. And there are pros to it. Don't get me wrong. If you can come into a job and they're paying you good money because you got these valuable skills, the coding skills, add in some interpersonal and good psychology skills, you're going to rise up the ranks very quickly in that environment. And you got that paycheck. You got that guaranteed paycheck every two weeks. Whereas with freelancing, you have no guaranteed paycheck. You don't know when the next job is going to come in. And perhaps even more stressing for people, you are totally responsible for the entire projects or the entire project, the entire business and the projects you run on. You're totally responsible for them. When you work for somebody, you don't have that responsibility. When you work for somebody, you're typically responsible for one thing. If you're like a, a team lead, a technology lead, a project manager, etc., you may be responsible for the project, but that's about it. You don't have to worry about sales. You don't have to wor worry about paying people on time. You don't have to worry about getting the next contract. You still have a very myopic, if you will, limited range of responsibilities. With that limited range of responsibilities and limited responsibilities in general, you have limited flexibility. So you can't call the shots. You're told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, what time to come in. And that could be all fine for you. So I'm mentioning all this because in freelance, none of that is defined for you. You define that. I haven't worked for anybody since I was a bouncer back in the 90s, early 90s, 91, 92, 90, 90 91, something like that. And uh, I was doing the bouncing job because I was working at nights in nightclubs. And then during the days, I had my days free to work on my business, which we were growing. As soon as the business became viable enough that it was able to pay uh, our salaries, then I quit the bouncing job and I just moved on. So with freelance, you have more responsibilities, more pressure because you got to handle all those things I just mentioned. But ultimately, once you get the machine going, once you get the freelance machine going, you have a lot more flexibility in your life. You can make a lot more money and you have a lot more choices. Whether you go work for corporate, quit your corporate job and go freelance or just go right into freelance. You don't need to get a job firsthand to become a freelancer. You can just jump right into it right away. Many of my students do. It's up to you. It's much more a question of your personality type, whether you can handle that extra responsibility or whether you can handle that imposed structure that the business will provide for you. Different people thrive in different environments and both can be amazing. As an extreme example, Tim Cook of Apple, he's a suit, he's an employee, but he's a billionaire. Exception, but point is, employees can become very, very wealthy. It just depends on luck and circumstance and so on and so forth. So there you go. I hope that's uh, an informative video for you.